Hey yo, what's up guys, welcome back to another episode. Today, we'll be doing another Madden Mobile episode. If you've enjoyed, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss another thing. So we'll appreciate it, let's get to it. Also, we are doing uh, week 3 predictions. So I went 12 and 4 last week, so that's good I guess. That's pretty, that's pretty, that's better than the first week of course. So we have team of the week, um, all these 6 players get rating bonuses. Uh, those include Tom, a blue Tom Brady, purple Derrick Henry, a blue Tyron Matthew, and a regular Cortland Sutton, uh, Cortland Sutton, Morgan Fox, and Trevion Diggs. I actually have uh, Tom Brady and Tyron Matthew, so that's good. And there's like something if you have them. Um, I don't know, I have to see. So uncommon Team of the Week players will get a 15 overall boost plus a 15 overall boost to Team of the Week players. There's a 30 overall, Jesus. Rare Team of the Week players will get a, a 20 plus overall boost with 10 overall to Team of the Week players. And our Epic will get 25. Okay. So we have. Ooh, okay. So they've updated the game. Um, as you can clearly see, the Daily Goals logo has changed. That's one. Alright, this. Okay, we gotta take this. And we take that too. All right, thank you very much, sir or ma'am. Uh, now the the these. Now they also updated this, so this stays the same. It's ten thousand. This stays the same as well. Pretty sure that stays the same. All right, players. Um, yeah, stamina. Okay, but now the new thing is the update, the training center. It's a, it's a small update. I'm not gonna go over this too much because I'm. This is a seasons mode episode, but. AFC and NFC, I think you had to complete um, the stage four or five on the, the Genesis. I think it was stage four of the journey. But now it's available to everyone because I guess it was a little difficult. AFCs are available, at, so they're ev available every other day. Every, uh, excuse me, every other day with Sundays both being available. Or that's when they refresh, my bad. So you could, once you play them all up, you, you know, do it, you know. So, so this day AFC refreshes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 12.30 and 7.30. So at 12.30 a.m. until 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time may vary depending on where you are. <coughs> and the NFC, um, it's basically Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and as well Sunday. Now the passing, you have to complete... Now this was, I think used to be five... This was uh, stage five that it's complete, but they they put it down to stage four, so it's like the patches, the passing and rushing, and so when you do unlock those, those the passing is available every refreshes every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Rushing Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, basically the same thing as AFC and NFC. So that is that. There's also I like that icon of the daily goals. I'll play this later. Do I, am I even in this round? Oh yeah, I lost. I forgot I choked. Like, really bad I choked. Yikes. Um, another thing, the, this, the new program is out. Like, it's actually, like, goodbye. The, 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 uh, what was it? The kickoff mode. That's gone now. Um, this is what my team looks like right now. As you see all these level ups, I did not mean to press this though. I wanted to press this. So, as you see, Tom Brady's a 143 overall. My goodness. That is absolutely insane. Like, wow. And then, uh, I don't think I leveled anyone else up. Right? No, this stays the same. Defense, so a 99 offense. Defense, oh, wait, did I get someone? What? I'm so confused. How can I level up? Oh, because Trev. Oh, okay, right, right, right. So Trevion Diggs. All right, I'll keep y'all there. No, because what happened was Trev Trevon Diggs. I said Trevion. I mean, I Trevon. I think that's how you say it. So before I had Joe Hayden there, and I had that Justin Blackman here, right? But what happened was so this is how I had it, right? What happened was though, be I forgot I have Trev. Trevion Diggs in my starting lineup. That's crazy. So 
I'm gonna switch. Oh, I can't. Hold on, I'm gonna switch. So I'm gonna do. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Right here. So he levels up to 86. So 86, but on the lineup he's 121. And then we switch him to Joe Hayden. So there you go, 97 offense. My offense went up to 100. Tom Brady's level 150. Jeez, this is insane. Trev Trevon Diggs 121 and Tyron Matthews a 153. My goodness. Lawrence guy, I'm trying to get to level 10 at least. Bradley Chubb, I got, um, by the way, Bradley Chubb, if you take away all the bonuses and all that, and it's just by me leveling them up, Bradley Chubb's my highest overall player. Level 15, two stars, 121 overall. He's a beast. If This defense should get me places. But yeah, 153 overall, Tyron Matthew. A 158 overall, Tom Brady. A 121 overall, Trevon Diggs. In real life, I, in the normal card, he's a 70 overall. So to go up 51 overall, that's insane. And then my special team stays the same. But can you believe that? That That's like insane. And then trades. Um, let's see. Oh, I got players. I got players. Um, I need some tour coins. Because I'm about to get the AFC South. If I have time, I, I might do it. Because my battery is a little low. It's 35%. Anyway, so this is a Colts episode. I totally did not just spend, like, the last six minutes talking. Uh, let's get to it quick. So, it's week three. The Colts played the Titans. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the next episode, if there's no new event, I'm going to try to do another one of these so I can get it quicker. Because I want to get at least uh, seven teams in this season. At least at least the two divisions. So, I'm going to do, like, random teams besides the Patriots and the Bills, hopefully. Um, so yeah, so you see I, I beat the Seahawks and what was a pretty low scoring game and I beat the Rams and what also was a pretty low scoring game. I'm going to try and this is on I think hard or medium. I don't remember what I put it on. So this is the team I'm playing. The Titans of course they have 83 overall Julio Jones started the team. They also got Ryan Tannehill. I remember in Madden 20 and even Madden 21 when I used to do this a lot. I used to go over the players. Uh, you have 77 overall Derrick Henry. 79 overall, A.J. Brown. Um, I don't see... Oh, Taylor Luan is right here. 76 overall. Ben Jones, 74. Um, 77 for Roger Salford. Salford. Saffold. Saffold. I, I don't know why I always pronounce that wrong. On defense, Janor Shake is a 69 overall. Um, who else? Who else? Danico Archery at 72 overall. Uh, Bud Derp. Derp, Duppy, Derpy, Derp, Dup, what, okay, 70 overall, Dupri, Dupri, that Dupri, that's how you say, Bud Dupri, uh, Rashad Evans, 69, Jalen Brown, 70, Harold Landry, 70, Kevin Bayard, 74, special teams, I doubt there's, um, Tucker McCain, 74, Cameron Bateson, at 67, as a kick and a punt returner, uh, yeah, let's get started, this is what my lineup looks like. Um, of course, we have Carson Wentz, 72 overall, 73, oh, oh, oops, 73 overall, um, Jonathan Taylor, 71, Marlon Mack, 74, Johnny Smith, that's a good one, a 70 overall, Devontae Smith, you know, I really think the Carson Wentz, Devontae Smith duo is elite, and also T.Y. Hilton, 71 overall, and our O-line is immense, like, it's really good. I don't know if that's what immense means. Immense. Um, yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty big. These guys, that's what it means. It's like large scale, whatever. Brand Smith, 76 overall. Um, Mark, jeez, oh, I always struggle with this name. Mark Lonowski, 70, oh, I said it right, 74 overall. Quinton Nelson, the star of the show, at 81 overall. Um, the rest, this guy, I think, is a backup because yeah, our other our starting center, I think, was injured. And same for our offensive tackle on defense. Yeah, you already know. Xavier Rhodes, 75 overall. Julian Blackman at 70. Jason Vera at 73. Rocky Alcin, 68. Kenny Moore, 72. Fred Warner, 75. Uh, Darius Leonard, 72. Cody Pay at 69 overall. And DeForest Buckner, 81. 
So, oh, I've, I, we can't leave all the special teams, of course. Um, Mr. Goggles at 78 overall, Nain Hines at 74 for kick returner, punt returner. And then Mr. Sanchez at 79 overall for a punter. So let's get to it. If we should win this game. Uh, hopefully the Colts do win this. Um, so I'll go over predictions while I wait. First game, Thursday Night Football is tonight. As you can see the time, this is maybe before the game kicks off. So you know I'm not cheating. Between Carolina and Houston, this this is a going to be an inter a, not an, a good game, but like an interesting game. Like this is going to be pretty interesting to see how both teams play out. So there's kickoff from Mr. Goggles to Cameron Bateson, who takes it all the way to the 33. So, of course, the Panthers are 2-0. How long can they keep this streak up? Are they actually a legit playoff contender? Can they really challenge the Bucks for that South title? I doubt it, but may, who knows? May, I think they would be a dark, a dark horse team for that, um, that wild card spot, the number... Seven spot, maybe even six. And the Houston Texans, on the other hand, they're one and one, yes, but they look pretty good. You know, I mean, yeah, they 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 played pretty bad against the Browns, but and their first game was against the Jags, but fresh start, new quarterback David Mills as Tyra Taylor got put in the IR. He won't be playing. That's an interception, Jason Verrett. Let's go. All right, that's good. Sorry that I got myself distracted with that interception, but it's, it's you know. So, uh, there's this, also there's like this Tyrod Taylor conspiracy. There's like a, a, the a conspiracy theory around whenever Tyrod Taylor gets injured, his backup that's most of the time a rookie, per, per, um, you know, succeeds him and becomes an absolute beast. And those the instances of those, the Browns, when he was in the Browns, he started, he got, I think it was like a neck injury or something. I don't remember exactly. And then Baker, oh no, he, I forgot what he was, but it was against the Jets week two. He was playing and um, he got injured in that game. I, I think it was during the game, pretty sure. And then like some way, I think it was like halfway through the first quarter. And then Baker came in and then, you know, the rest what happened since then for them. And then when he got so he went when he got to Los Angeles for the Chargers. He started the first game. He went to sit up for a game, the second game, but um, yeah, something about like an injection to his neck, and I forgot what it was. I think it was like painkillers. I don't even know. Um, I don't remember to be honest. But the doc, whoever was giving him that messed up and they like punctured like one of his veins or his, I don't know what it was they punctured and he was out I have to actually look that up Tyrod let me look it up Ty jeez I don't remember how to spell this guy's name Tyrod Taylor there you go it was something about his his like neck like an injection that he had and then that completely screwed him over and then yeah he got benched well he didn't get benched but Justin Herbert got the start. Impressed, and the rest is history. This team is amazing. Then he got shipped off. Well, he signed for Houston. Um, yeah. And now David Mills is coming in, who really isn't expected to do much, to be honest. But, you know, if this keeps going, David Mills could be a franchise quarterback for the Houston Texans. Although, I, I, kinda, I really do think this is going to stop here. If it isn't if then I would really believe this theory if David Mills does become something in the NFL, especially as a Texan, in somewhere in the next five years or so, or even if he presses tonight. But regardless of all that, this this is the Texans. So in that regards, the Panthers are winning. Yeah, the probably the biggest explanation, the longest explanation I've ever had for one team of why they're winning. So yeah. Now we're going to go for AFC teams besides Sunday Night Football games. where Well, actually, the Sunday Night game and the Monday Night game are both NFC, so I won't have to worry about that. So the next game, Los Angeles-Kansas City. Ooh, this is going to be a good, a really good game. Um, Yeah, uh, this is going to be a pretty good game. Nonetheless, both offenses should do great, although Kansas City will probably come out with the victory. And, yeah. 
I have the Chiefs winning this game. I could, pro I probably will be end up being wrong. The Chargers will get an upset win, but yeah, I do think Kansas City will bounce back from that loss against the Ravens. I mean, the Chargers are lo have lost two against the Cowboys. Both teams looking to rebound after devastating losses last week, but I think it, this impacts the Chiefs more. So I'm gonna say the Chiefs win. Next up, we have the Bengals and the Steelers. Um, yeah, the Bengals. Well, they they didn't look so good last time uh, when they played the Bears, and I had them winning the Bears. The Steelers, on the other hand, I have them two one and one right now. Actually, I have the entire division one and one. I'm going to say, though, Pittsburgh wins this. Yeah. That's my take. Next up, we have Indianapolis and Tennessee. And this will be another good game. I'm playing this game right now, like, you know, as the season as a season is mode. And I do think Indianapolis... Well, actually, not. I, what am I saying? Indianapolis does not stand a chance. Tennessee is winning this game. Yeah, there's no way that um, Jacob Eason is going to come in and beat the Titans. I mean, yeah, the Titans are not playing so good right now, but, yeah, I think the Titans will win this. Next up, we have the Jets and the... Bro, I almost said the Bears. Jets and the Broncos. This is another interesting game. How will the Jets respond after, well, a pretty big beatdown from the New England Patriots? Zach Wilson had a pretty rough game, to say the least. Just like that defense... Just like that play right there was pretty rough. Um, could they bounce back? I think they could. I just don't think they have what it takes to be what is a pretty stacked Broncos team. And, you know, Teddy Bridgewater, I said this from the beginning of the, before the season started. Teddy Bridgewater, um, he's a good quarterback. He really is. If it wasn't for the injury in Minnesota, he could, probably could have been the franchise quarterback and all. And maybe that Kirk Cousins deal would have never happened. Actually, it probably would have never happened. And this is... A, and now... Bridgewater has all of the weapons he needs. He can thrive. It's 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 a perfect combo for him. It really is. And so, um, yeah, this team, the Broncos. I know this, I didn't say that they were gonna be much of a playoff team. I thought they would be one of those teams that play really good but don't do enough at the same time. But you know what? They're proving me wrong so far. But I, I, I bet they're going to pull in Oakland Raiders. But for now, I have them winning this game. They're going to go 3-0, which I've so far predicted correctly this entire time. I predicted that they would win both of their games to start. And I do think they're going to go 3-for-3. Three three. Hopefully they do. I, I really do wish they, you know, experience a winning, <laughs> to say the least. Oh, I got to go. Um, let's see. I'm going to go, go long play here real quick. Boom. Get down, get down, get down. All right, one second left. I'm going to kick the field goal. Yikes, this is not a good idea, but I'm going to try anyways. So this, I don't know how far this is, if I'm being honest. That was not good. That's going to go wide right. Nope, not even close. All right, next up we have the Dolphins and the Raiders. Another interesting game. The Raiders, um, they're... Cruising, you know, they really are. They they beat the Ravens in Week One. They beat the Steelers in Week Two. This team, this team looks pretty good. I know they're gonna choke eventually, but the Dolphins, yikes! Jacoby Brissett is your starting quarterback, especially after losing thirty-five zero to the Bills. I'm having the Raiders winning that game for sure. And so that means for all the AFC games, I have the home side winning all five of the in all five of those. Interesting. Now we go to the rest of the AFC, NFC, the interconference games. Washington, Buffalo. What a game this will be. Buffalo, though, I think is going to win that. Barely, I say. I say barely because, you know, Washington could pull anything out of their sleeve. Um, this this is a pretty talented team. If they could get their quarterback situation solved, then this team could really be a threat for the NFC. Next up, we have Chicago and Cleveland which has pretty much the same problem as Washington, their quarterback. If they can find a quarterback that plays really good, like, I don't know, maybe some guy named Justin Fields, like he's been doing, then this team is a threat in the NFC as well. Packers, watch out. And Vikings too, I guess. But the Bears played the, ba the Browns. The Browns are pretty good. Although, 
to be honest, this game is probably going to go down to the wire. And I do think the Bears will miss a field goal. Browns winning that game. Next up, we have the Cardinals and the Jags. Now, this game, yeah, the Cardinals are winning for sure. They're going 3-0. This Cardinals team is unstoppable. And again, they'll probably end up choking later, but hopefully we don't get to that point. Um, I really want to see the Cardinals um, succeed. You know, I've been, I, last year I said they were going to be really good, and, well, they, they kind of choked, you know? And, yeah, hopefully that doesn't happen this year. Same with the Raiders. Next up, we have the the Ravens and the... Jeez, oh, I almost said the Tigers. This is not baseball, man. The Ravens and the Lions. Um, This is probably the easiest pick of the week. If the Lions do win, congrats to them. Like, honestly... The Ravens bounced back last week. They played really well against the uh, the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, and you know what? They're gonna succeed again. Uh, this this is probably be the biggest victory in the entire week, besides Arizona. Actually, no, Arizona and Jacksonville come second, but this will be the lock of the week for sure. Um, yeah, that's my lock of the week. The Brown, the Browns. Jeez, the Ravens winning against Detroit. Not that Detroit has a bad team. It's just that they can't win. They really can't win. <clears throat> voice crack. Uh, I don't even remember who they played last week. I have to check because I have pretty bad memory. Oh, yeah, that's right. They got destroyed by Green Bay. Okay, next. Next up, we have the New England Patriots and the New Orleans Saints. Oh, this is going to be fun. What should have been Super Bowl 52 to be... I mean, Super Bowl 52. Super Bowl 53, in all honesty, how did A.J. Brown get that open? I don't even know what happened there. I need to see the replay on that. I know you guys probably saw that. So, let's see. All right. Oh, Jesus. Two, three. He got that one. Okay, yeah. The fair play to him. Fourth quarter, we're up by seven. Anyways, so, Saints-Patriots. The Saints coming off a pretty bad loss next week. The Patriots, well, the complete opposite. They're coming off of a 19-point win, whilst the Saints are coming off of a 19-point loss. Also, their stadium caught fire, so, yeah. Just like pretty, just like pretty much their off the entire offense did against Carolina, and I'm gonna say the Patriots win this, yeah, because they they just have a they just look better. Next up, the Falcons and the Giants. Uh, this now we're going to the AFC and AFC NFC matchups. I think this will be a close game. Um, uh, I really don't know who to pick for this. This could go either way, really. If the Giants play like they did last week. And not get offside calls on them, and maybe not have really bad drops in the end zone. Then I do think this could be a win for them, an easy win for them. Rather, the Falcons, if they if their offense could just come together and play, and their defense like at least tries, they could win too. Uh, I have more faith in the Falcons though. For some reason, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, my gut's just feeling it, so I'm gonna go for Falcons. But really, this game could go either way. This game, I think, will be the most um, two-sided game. Because, really, this game is going to go either way. You can't really predict that. Like, that's really tough. The only other game that comes remotely close is the Bucks rams which I'm about to talk about right now because they're next on the list. This is going to be a good game. This will probably be the game of the week, for sure. By a long shot. If Drew Brees was still playing for the Saints then, and Tom Brady as well, then I would say that game would be... That probably would be Sunday Night Football, for what I know. But, yeah, the Bucks, the Rams... The Bucks have New England next week, so this is back-to-back pretty tough games. Um, The Bucks, they they are good and all. The Rams are really good. And you know what? The Rams are too good. I, can't, I just can't pass up on them. They're going to win this game. But I think this will go to an overtime and they'll get a field goal. Tom Brady just is not good in these situations. Now, if this was in the playoffs, the Bucks would easily win this because it's playoff Tom. Only a really bad team could probably, or a team that nobody would think would win, could probably beat them. A.K.A. the Titans and the Jets. So, yeah, that's that. Or pretty much anywhere in the wild card, with the exception of last year. So, next up, we have the Vikings and the Seahawks. This is going to be an interesting game. Seahawks. 
They came off a loss. They they blew a lead against Tennessee. They had a fourteen point lead, um, pretty much halfway through the fourth quarter, and they just went full twenty eight to three mode. And yeah, I really don't have much to say about that. So they're playing against the Vikings. The Vikings, well. I don't know. This team is like up and down, up and down, and all around. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Did this team win yesterday? I mean, yesterday, last week? No, they did not. They lost to Cincinnati and then to Arizona. So I think the Seahawks will barely win this game. This, I think, will be a close game. Most people would say the Seahawks easily win this or the Vikings. Like, Noah would think straight down the middle, but I think this game is going to go down to the wire. This will be a pretty fun matchup, to be honest. This is like a dark horse candidate for matchup of the week, I'm going to say. But I have the Seahawks winning, though. Next up, we have the Packers and the 49ers. Um, Sunday Night Football. Yay. The last time these two played, yikes. That was... um, not, That was pretty, pretty, you know... How, what's the word? This was pretty pathetic to say the pathetic to say the let to say the least. Jeez, I cannot talk today. Why not? But yeah, the last when was the last time these two played? Besides the NFC Championship, um, and yeah, the NFC Championship was pretty bad. That was a, a snooze too. Okay, so I just found a website that has all this. Ooh, what happened here? It's time for some football. Earn game day tokens at the tour during NFL games. Ooh. Ooh. Use game day tokens to purchase game day packs in the store. Okay, I like this, Madden. I like this. All right, so. Yikes. All right. All right, hold on. I need to do this real quick. Alright, so I'm just checking this real quick. Packers won. No, the last time the Packers played the 49ers, the Packers did win. That was regular season last year. In the playoffs, yeah, this it's been a blowout. The last the last three the last pretty close game was in 2018. But last year and then the two time the two times they played two years ago and then last season they were pretty much one-sided. The Packers lost 37-8 one game. They lost again 37-20. And then they won 34-17. So this will probably be another one of those games. Yeah, I think the 49... No, I'm just kidding. The Packers are going to win this game. Next up, we have the Eagles and the Dolph... Oh, Jesus Christ. The Eagles and the, the Cowboys. Another NFC East matchup. Monday Night Football. What a surprise. Uh, the Cowboys are winning this. As much as I don't like this team, I hate this team in general. I think everyone that's not a Cowboys fan hates this team. Um, yeah. So, in terms of my predictions, if they were all correct, the only undefeated teams, there would be four. Those would be the Raiders, the Rams, the Panthers, surprisingly, and the Cardinals. And then you would have the Titans. Jeez, I'm not even going to go over those. Two. Those are a lot of 2-1 teams. Um... Oh, and I forgot the Broncos would also be 3-0. and So that's, what, five teams, right? Yeah, five teams. And there would be one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, and three teams, being the Jets, Colts, Jags, uh, Lions, Vikings, and Giants. Yikes. That's the word, yikes. And the playoff picture would look like this. Titans versus Ravens. And this is from, like, second, like, the highest to lowest, and then until we get to four and five. Steelers, Chiefs, Bills, Dolph uh, Dolphins, Bills, Broncos, and the Raiders get a home field advantage. Panthers, Bucks, um, Packers, Seahawks, Cowboys, Cardinals, the Rams, of course, getting the advantage. So, back to this. Uh, game day tokens, uh, featured games this week, Thursday Night Football, Sunday Night Football, Monday Night Football, 
Bears, Cleveland at one o'clock, and then four o'clock. Okay, so at every game slot, so there, which is uh five Thursday night game, the one o'clock game, the four o'clock game, the Sunday night game, and the Monday night game. So there's one for each, and there's a player representing each. So for Thursday night football, you could get Deontay Jackson. Don or Dante Jackson, I don't know. you get the ninety overall. At the one o'clock game, you could get the ninety four overall Khalil Mack, and then for the four o'clock game, it would be ninety one DK Metcalf. The sun the the Sunday night game, it would be Aaron Rodgers ninety four, and the Monday night football, they have two, uh, both ninety overalls. Darian Darius Slay Jr. for the Eagles, and then Leighton Vander Esk for the Cowboys. So, okay, KJ Wright is available to... Hi, oh, jeez, how much? My battery's about to die, yikes. Uh, KJ Wright is available to sign. Do I really need him? Oh, no, I don't remember if I needed him. I can't check my lineup. I'm just going to accept it because I have money to, to, to waste. I hope that was... Yep, that was a good choice. Good job, me. Good job. All right, so Sky... Sky Moore, didn't they say it? Sky Moore, or something like that. And we'll switch. All right, boop. Right. Yeah, I'll put them right there. All right, that can stay like that. All right, good stuff. And that's it. Let's go to that that thing. I didn't want this to be more than thirty minutes long, but yeah. Okay, tour stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna show you guys. I'm not gonna actually play it. I guess it would be here, right? How do you get... Oh, it's right here. This expires in f six hours. All right. End at 2 a.m. Uh, so you get to play five times against the Texans. You get a chance at a Carolina player and a Houston purple player. And 25 game day tokens. Um, Are there any new trades? I honestly thought there will be. Yep, I was very correct. There isn't. So what does the store look like? How do you trade tokens? Um... Oh, here we go. Game day. Uncommon game day. So, Jeremy... So, our options that we could... The people that we could get right now are as follows. Jeremy Chin, 90 overall. Zach Cunningham, 92 overall. Dante Jackson, 90 overall. Taylor Mort Moten, 90 overall. And Laramie Tunsil, 91. So, three Panthers, two Texans. The highest being Zach Cunningham. Three 90s, all Panthers, and Laramie Tunsil, 91. That'll go for five thousand, or if you have cash, six thousand. So five thousand game day tokens. Um. So this expi you could get them twice. Uh, to be honest, I don't know who I would get. I probably would not get a corner or a safety because that that's like overpowered right now on my team. So that would rule out Jeremy Chin, Dante Jacks, Dante Jackson, and then my middle linebackers are pretty good too. So that would rule out. Actually, let me see. Zach Cunningham. Uh, right here. Middle linebackers. What about my offensive tackles? Yeah, they're, they're really good. Alright, maybe middle linebackers I'll replace. Maybe that. Or a safety slash corner. Probably a corner, because I, I, need, I need to upgrade that corner number two. Because I have Joe Hayden. Yikes. So, middle linebacker or corner would do for me. So, in this case, that would be... That would be Zach Cunningham, Dante Jackson. So those two I could go for. Probably I would go for Dante Jackson. But yeah, I'll probably go for Dante Jackson. Maybe Zach Cunningham if I'm feeling it. Hopefully I get lucky. I, re I really want to get a 90 overall player. That would be sick if I do. So yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss another thing. It is well appreciated. Uh, enjoy your week three of football. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.